Good morning, everybody. My name's Debbie. Um, I'm a member of Christ Central, and today I'll be reading from Romans 8, verses 31 to 39. And this passage is headed up more than conquerors. <clears throat> so what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So in the first line, Paul is asking, so what does this all mean? And there Paul's referring to living by the power of the Holy Spirit, destined for glory in the sure and certain hope of experiencing our full status as God's sons and daughters. Paul talks about life, peace, sonship, and freedom from condemnation. So when I was mulling over this passage, two things stood out to me. In verse 35, it says nothing can separate us from the love of God. And also in verse 34, it says he is interceding for us. So a few mornings ago, I decided to find somewhere to sit down and spend some quiet time with God. And that's not at home because that never works for me. Um, and to finish writing this. As my morning unfolded, I felt this latter passage speaking to me. He is interceding for us at the right hand of God. In the Passion Translation of this passage, it says... How could Jesus possibly condemn us since he is continually praying for our triumph? And I have to admit that this particular truth is one that I'd forgotten for a long time. But how wonderful that we have God's only son seated at God's right hand, praying without ceasing on our behalf. So <clears throat> my morning went like this. I dropped my eldest son off at the station first thing and decided to park the car and go and have a coffee and sit somewhere without distractions. Long story short, due to a random series of events and decisions, I ended up with no handbag, car key or money, parked in our local supermarket car park um, with no ticket. After my initial shock, uh, which bordered on a panic attack when I realised what I had done, I started to think about what to do next. The point I want to make is that I know that Jesus was with me the entire time through the morning. I turned to him and asked him for peace, for wisdom. And as time went on, I prayed about the situation that he would free me from a lifelong way of thinking that wasn't helpful and had caused this predicament. And so that a similar situation wouldn't happen again, because I wouldn't want that to happen again. I asked him that he would get rid of this stronghold within me and that I would learn the lesson once and for all. So I um, had locked my handbag in the car with our only car key in it. How could you possibly do that, you ask? God knows, but I should have known better. However, I am now fully convinced in my spirit that I will have learned that lesson through the power of Holy Spirit. 
which nothing else has been able to do, neither time nor advancing years. I just know that it's been done and that makes me rejoice. So as I was waiting to be rescued, I started to try to find things to be thankful for. Eventually, I find myself with a heart overflowing with thankfulness and only God could do that, especially in that situation. There were people that I had met that morning and spoken to and had to rely on for help that I wouldn't, it wouldn't have been the case otherwise. And as my rescuer was arriving, I had a phone call from my son, which I saw as an answer to the prayer that I had told him I would be praying as I dropped him off at the station that morning. God works in so many infinitesimal ways, can't even say that properly, infinitesimal ways in our situations that we cannot imagine or understand. Later that afternoon, as eventually I found somewhere quiet to sit down, I opened the first page of a journal which I had fished out from under a pile of books in our living room and which had survived our recent house move. In the corner of the back of the first page was a typed sentence. It says, the most beautiful time of day is the quiet time we spend resting in Jesus' love. I just thought, thank you, God, there you are speaking to me again, guiding me and teaching me and affirming Thank you for your amazing love for us. So to finish, what does Jesus want us to triumph over? For me, it reminded me that he has triumphed on our behalf over the enemy of our souls, who would steal our peace, destroy our health and accuse and condemn us. I do not condemn myself for my behaviour and neither does God. That's the important thing. I'm free to allow him to change me and I'm free to allow him to work all those things to the good because he loves me. And because of his love, I have received my gift of love for him. So that's all I have today for you, everybody. Have a good morning. <laughs>